That's odd. Do you guys hear me now? All right. Definitely using my mana this turn. So this goes and gets Blood Crypt. And then I cycle Street Rave, or Watery Grave. That's odd that that's not going. The desktop audio is not. Why is my desktop audio not responding? That's. So my mic audio, better now? Okay. Alright, so cycle here. Thought sees. It's got double path, which answers both of my creatures. I think I'm just going to take a path and then play a shadow. We might rip, like, it might go, they might cycle cast out and miss, and then we have the opportunity to rip a, um, to rip a stub. Oh, so they did. I wonder if this means if I wonder if they hit a land or not. Come on, miss a land drop. God damn it. Okay, so alright, well at least that's double threat. So let me think. I guess I go get this fetches breeding pool, and then I just go get shadow shadow. Alternatively, I could get a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, I think I just want to kill my opponent. We know all their four cards. Might as well turn this back on so that you guys can hear it. So they did cycle cast out. They found another path. Jesus. Oh uh, no. So now this Gideon's gonna be a problem. Now it's not a problem. Alright, take this Gideon. Crack them for 10. Cross our fingers. Come on. Yeah, but all right. So I want pulse, pulse, Golgari charm, Snapcaster, stub, and probably Fulminators. Don't want fail push. Probably don't want dismember. Decay, pulse, Golgari charm. I'll hit plane. Decay hits planeswalkers, detention spheres. This hits planeswalkers. So the pulse, and then it hits search first canter, detention spheres. This hits Colonnade. Um, I know I want my Lilianas. Um, my removal's all gone, which is good. Got my three Snapcasters. Maybe the Fulminators are not where we want to be, because it just hits Colonnade. Might want to bring those back in when I'm on the play. And then I probably can cut a, probably shave a cantrip. Well, no, I'm going to need the incense to get in the graveyard. Maybe just cut a land. Yeah, I'm going to cut a land. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep my basics. Yeah, we'll cut, we'll cut a land. This is the worst land in our deck. So can you not hear me when my... So you can't. So you can't hear. Can can you hear me when I have, like when this is in? You can't hear what I'm saying, or is that not how that works? Is that not how that's working?
because I just want to make sure. I can hear you now just fine. All right, well, let me know if it changes, because I do like listening to the music when I play. Oh, this hand's good. So you said, why Thought Scour over Opt? Because I decided to play two Last Hopes in Snapcaster Mage, so Thought Scour fills the graveyard up. I'd rather get this hit with a um, with a spreading season. This alternatively, I could just take spreading seas, and I could. I really, I think I'm going to take spreading seas. It's going to smooth out his draw. I can snap thought seas any one of these cards moving forward. That's an absolutely fantastic draw. Don't have drawn an answer, bro. So next turn, oh, I, I'm gonna probably gonna th snap thought seeds. You should run a one or two of Tasker Angler. I thought about it. I thought about it. I decided to not mess with my graveyard though. But I decided I want to keep it intact so that Snapcaster doesn't take away Delirium when you take an instant out. I just wanted to keep... I wanted to keep it a Traverse build because I like the Traverse builds better. I think they're more consistent. I wonder if my opponent's going to field around me. Nope. Okay, so... I'm testing zero, but agree, Traverse is better. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that my Traverse has stayed online. I think I'm actually going to fetch a basic here because I... Well, no, because then they're going to just waste me off that. I might as well give them like a difficult decision no matter what. Sequencing properly here so that I... Don't when I shrink my time away because I take the card out of my graveyard, which is what Grim Flare might be better. Oh sweet. So now I get so now we go like this. I'm gonna suck if I mill my basic. Alright, I just had a thought seize. Okay. I could have flashed my Snapcaster in there. And too bad I didn't hit a stub. You gonna path my Goyf, bro? Okay. Take this Thought Seize out of the graveyard. Just gonna take this. Then hopefully these Tarmogoyfs take us to the promised land. There's the fortress. Definitely gonna thought seize my opponent in their main phase to make it so they have to choose between this glimmer. I am putting myself very close to dead to a colonnade shot. Okay, so the glimmer. Now this puts delirium. This gives me back delirium, so I might want to traverse for another threat. The problem is they can just double chump with snapcasters. Right, take cryptic. So I can't take any more damage. If I go traverse. If I traverse for a Death Shadow, my Death Shadow is an 8-8, eight, eight, so this is 7. Hang on. 7. Thought sees myself, take Liliana, makes it 8 next turn. So yeah, I think I traverse for a Death Shadow, make them D-Sphere, play the Colonnade, hope they miss, and then... Because, like, they could just flash in Snapcaster and Chump Block next turn. 
but I really want them. Yeah, I went down to I okay, not two flare to super good versus creature decks. You're talking about Grim Flare? Being good versus creature decks? So I think what I'm gonna do is traverse traverse with Death Shadow, play Death Shadow, hold up Breeding Pool. They desphere the Death Shadow. I crack them for seven. And then I thought seize away my Liliana. And then crack them for eight when they only have one mana up. I think that's the plan. Oh, I got a little twitch alert there. Uh, FD uh, password system. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So I can't snap cryptic. It's lethal. So I just had to hope they miss a. Um, We gotta hope that they miss a cryptic or a verdict. Notice I haven't followed. Well, I appreciate it. So, all right, there's the verdict, there's that. And then play a colonnade, and then we definitely just go for it. There's a colonnade. Ooh, that does it. And that's eight. Got him. That's something I love about these Death Shadow decks. Sometimes you gotta find creative ways to win. And that was creative AF. So I tend to think that Grim Flare is not super great against creature decks. I tend to think that Grim Flare is really good against combo decks when it's not, when you can hit with it un unimpeded. You know what I mean? When you can like get in there and, you know, when it, it's, it's not, there's nothing blocking it. I don't want to play against a deck full of kitchen things. Second. All right, we're back. We're back in it. Sorry, I was just answering a message. Okay. So this hand is good, not great, but we will keep it. Lead off with Misty Rainforest, it's our worst fetch land. You're always going to have a worse fetch land. Like you're going to have a land that doesn't catch everything, that it like misses some of your duels. And you're playing a three color version, it's going to get all your duels, but this doesn't get basic swamp. So it's, our, it's just by far our worst land in the deck. Lead off here. Okay, so we're going to assume my opponent's a combo deck. We're going to assume that there's some form of degeneracy there, and I'm just going to, like, go... I'm just going to go all in that it's a combo deck. Because I don't imagine what other deck would... We don't need a forest against the combo deck. What other deck would just snap concede like that? Maybe keep in an Abrupt Decay. And we still have some removal spells. So, yeah, I think this is what, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, this hand's very good. Very, very disruptive. Until our opponent has a... Um, yeah, 
So birds of paradise. Okay, so we were wrong. But our hand's still pretty good against like a birds of paradise deck. Should have should have fetched no, I guess we want Snapcaster, so we do want like a little bit more late game. Okay, so I think we definitely take Wall Roots. And then we're gonna brutality this. And I don't know if we're gonna scoop if we're gonna get rid of anything, because this appears to be like a Kiki Cord deck. But they're gonna have two brand new cards, and I definitely wanna get rid of this Revlark before this gets into play, I guess. So I wanna keep my Thoughtseize. Alternatively, I could Thoughtseize now and play Death Shadow, which sounds pretty great. Okay, so take Wall of Omens. Oh, we can't. Well, green no. Because if we if we let if we just play a one one, then this pontiff gets us. So <coughs> I guess I kind of have to take pontiff. Alternatively, I could take wall of omens and then snap thought sees redlark next turn. Basically, I don't want this redlark hitting the bathroom. One, two, three, four. I guess I just take Pontiff and get Death Shadow into play. Let my opponent cantrip. It's just so weak not getting like not getting the shadow in play. Because they wanted because like a lot of combo decks they mulligan can't be a discard spell. Oh, there's a lava one, they still have planes. They drew stomp grass. So you have Revlark X. Cast this before I cast for attack because we're going to pump. Eldritch Evolution. So one, two, three, four, five. Eldritch Evolution gets them a Blood Moon effect, right? But this is just like a huge 4-3 flyer that I can't beat. Maybe I should have collected Brutality. I guess I'm going to take... I think I still have to take this Revlark. And then even if my brother, like... Even if my opponent gets like a... Whatever, a... Gets one of these and gets like Magus of the Moon, we still have like a 7-7 in play that's just going to like... Smack hard. And if we can still cast our spells, then we can beat this next turn. There's the planes. Maybe they're going to get into like a Renegade Rallyer. Oh, gross. We boarded out the forest. So we're definitely going to bring in more of our, like, creature package here. Like, I'm definitely going to bring in Knight of Souls and Trail. Because it's going to hit birds. It's going to hit mana dorks. It's going to hit voices. Or at least harass voice a lot. We're definitely going to lean our deck out a little more. Four mana. This maybe gets Resto or gets uh, Renegade Rallyer probably. Yeah, Renegade Rallyer sounds like the most sense because then they get back their Wall of Omens. And then I'll probably just go Collector Brutality, Escalate, Ditch the Inquisition, play Tarmogoyf, and hit the bird. They could get Eternal Witness. An Eternal Witness Chain would probably be pretty good. They get Eternal Witness. I need to make sure that I resto bounce. Okay. 
So they draw a card. All right, escalate with two modes, minus two, minus two, gain and drain. We're actually cold at this resto. We're just gonna hope our opponent didn't hit. Opponent's already at six. Is a Kiki Jiki? No. Oh god. That's that's way bad. My opponent attacks, yep. So that doesn't do anything because we don't have delirium. So I think what we do is three five. We just have to neg we have to neg two, neg two this, and escalate. And then we just have to serve with both of our guys and hope that we get there. I guess what I could have now, because I needed to kill that and gain life, so it's not like I could have. Uh, it's not like I could have even attacked, had them kill uh, Snapcaster and then traverse, because then I'm just dead in the air. Okay. We trade the ground. Opponent needs a blocker. Which they have a good blocker. Okay, so this is like a four color Eldritch Evolution deck. Okay, so we sideboarded very poorly. Liliana last up was really good against this deck. This is good. I don't like Inquisition very much. Um, I don't think I need all of my Snapcaster Mages because we're not looking to go that long. Collective Brutality is fine. Want my basic. Um, probably want like some number of... Probably want my Dismember. Probably don't need all of my stubs, though some of them are probably good. It's just difficult. Abrupt Decay seems kind of loose because like Fatal Push is just a better version of Abrupt Decay. Don't need Surgicals. I kind of just want a healthy mix of everything. Like I don't... Like this Maelstrom Pulse might be fine. Inquisition, Inquisition. My Thought Seizes are fine. Pushes. Maybe I want like a Gargari charm. Maybe I don't want Snapcaster. Like what if I just take out Snapcaster and then bring in like the fatal pushes and just say lower to the ground. Just aggro. Yeah, I think I like that better. What does the charm do? The charm just says neg one, neg one, and if we get into some weird combat scenario. It's good, so maybe that's not worth it either. Maybe I want something like a harder, like a Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, we'll go like this. We'll try this. I don't really know exactly the side. Like, I just kind of threw this together here. All right, so we have our Night of Souls Betrayal, so we're going to keep this. I'm going to cycle Street Wraith to start. Hopefully find a discard spell. Yeah, we did. So, I've got both of my basics in my deck, right? I might get a basic here, just be a little conservative in my life total. Yeah. We'll leave the other one in there to be fetched with Path. Because we have a Dismember that we'll probably end up using. Alright, so we deal with Bird. Probably just take Path. Deal with Bird. Cord's not going to be very good. Yeah. The low missionaries, whatever. Razor Verge Thicket, Bird. 
check out my top card. It's a bobble. Probably don't want a bobble. I get blue green tapped and then just push this. I also want to be like conservative in my life total against a uh, deck that's full of uh, like Restoration Angels and Sage Rhinos. All right, so there's our there's our money card. So we take two, three, go to eleven. Probably just fetch our basic with our Misty. There's no sense in taking more damage. Wooded Foothills. Probably get the two for here. I would assume this is a Pontiff. Oh, what do we got here? A Renegade Rallyer. Brings back Bird. All right. No, they bring back their Wooded Foothills. So hang on, turn off auto yields. Let me think. So I want to make this cord bad, so I think I'm actually just going to like dismember this at the end of the turn, full retail, and then untap, and then slam this, because then all the rest of the cards our opponent has are kind of blanked. Overgrown Tomb. That Thought Scour should, should find us something good. And that blanks at least, at least one card in his hand. I knew my opponent's hand besides what they drew. That night, super spicy. It's it's sweet, man. And it's not like they're gonna keep a pride mage in against me, you know. Eternal witness gets back. Renegade rallyer. Save so renegade rallyer pontiff cord. All right, so we boarded out our Snapcasters, right? Yeah, so I can go get my land tapped. I'm really not worried about this not having Revolt. We'll get that at some point. Traverse. Traverse gets me Death Shadow. My mirror five five shadow. Just our creature decks. No, just creature decks. Like affinity, because we don't have ancient grudge, so I just wanted another card that was like lights out against affinity. What is this? Rally her back. Wooded foothills. So they have Orzhov Pontiff quarter calling still. Well, we'll take the cord. And then we'll we'll do we'll race here because our deck's much better at racing than our opponent's is. Because this week cracked for five, they crack us for two, we go, then we crack for seven. Yeah, it just like lights out. Absolutely lights out against Infinity. So they drew Ghost Quarter, which is gas. Yeah, I mean, I'm still just going to attack. Because their last card's always off Pontiff. I could have shocked myself to threaten a two-turn clock, but I don't want to get goaded by, like, Sage Rhino.
Yeah, they drew a Heath. This Knight of Souls Trail just shuts them off. Again, there's no reason to cast that. Because I have to take four and go to three, then Siege Rhino's a live top deck. I'm just not about that life. Yeah, Infect as well. It's also just good against other Lingering Souls decks. Because, like, I can't beat a Lingering Souls deck. Okay. All right, so that clears the board. Because this blocks, then I fetch and kill this. The voice token dies. I don't even think I have a land to get. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just like it's just a card that completely takes over the game. Yep. Like that game was all about Night of Souls Betrayal. Like you just saw a Death Shadow deck draw six lands and win a game that was not really close. Oh no, I don't want to draw. Yeah, I mean I just Night of Souls like if I'm ever playing Jun Death Shadow and I don't have white in my deck, I play Night of Souls Betrayal. I don't. I tend to not like it too, too much in Grixis because you can play just Staticaster. Yeah, playing against Yoshiki. I would like to play first. It's pretty medium. I'm going to fetch first, and then, in, and then Street Wraith in position. I'm going to lead off with Misty, because it's A, my worst land, and we have two of them. So Six Sigma, I'm assuming that you're the guy that I've been chatting with about this deck online. Is that a yes, no, maybe so? Yep. Glad you're here to check it out. I appreciate it. I appreciate anybody that talk. Just talk. Like, just interact about magic. You know? Just interact. Follow, like, subscribe, tweet. Like, anything like that. And that's the best way to, like, I'll play your deck or support me. You know what I mean? Okay, so they kept a six. Yo, a few things. They put a card on top. Few things get me more excited in Magic than inquisitioning my opponent after they mulligan. Mm hmm. So it's a land. So they kept a land on top. So, Darksteel Citadel, Signal Pest, Mox Opal. So I could just take Opal. Or I could just take, because there's 100% guarantee there's a land on top of my bonus deck. So I'm just going to take Ravager, and then I'm going to take Champion. Yes, the night will be good. The charter course was cool. Like, I think like magic in magic theory, the charter course works. This, they play a spring leaf drum, and they pass. Yeah, in magic theory, the charter course works. Does it actually work? I'm not super sure. Okay, so the easiest way for us to lose this game is for them to land an edge champion. 
So we're just going to get its champion out of the way. Am I crazy? Did they just draw two cards? Was that Signal Pest in there? Oh, I guess Spring Leech on Signal Pest is on that. Okay. And then this is going to come into play tapped as a breeding pool. So the Charter Course was like interesting in paper. I didn't play against anything where like Charter Course Lingering Souls was sweet. Why no Tendrils? I went 4 1. Like. It was a successful league. So there's a really interesting decision about whether I should thought see or snap hit this Galv Blast. Well now now I'm not worried about it. So one, two, three, four. They'd have to like mortgage their entire board to kill my Tarmogoyf, especially now that I got this stub. I do think Charter Course is cool. And that's what like the Grixis Death Shadow decks, all Death Shadow decks, what they lack is they lack any form of card advantage. And like using uh using Charter Course is actually card advantage. And you mill stuff, which is sweet. Like, it, even if you're just casting it, like, without raid, you, like, filter your cards. Because you have a lot of dead draws, as Death Shadow decks do. Like, that's just kind of, like, a cost of doing business when it comes to the deck. I might lose this game. Um, That's just a cost of doing business. There's no card advantage. And, uh, what else was, it, what was I going to say? There's no form of card advantage. And, like, at least... Charter Course helps me filter. Okay, so one, two, three. So they just move this over. So I'm actually in a lot of trouble. I think I need to actually snap Inquisition and then stub the Gal Blast. And then have the Snapcaster the Chump Block. Yes, it can help mitigate wrong. Because like sometimes you're at four and you draw Street Rage. You're just like, well, this is useless. Oh, I can't. That's bad. So I'm actually just going to hold. Because I can't take... If I take three damage, then I go to six, block, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. I could just die. So yeah, I've actually just got to hold. And I don't think I can attack with my Tarmoloif. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I can't even attack with Goyf. Right? Negawa. One, two, four. Yeah, so I think we're just we're just in a holding pattern. I'm going to stop this blast. So my opponent could load up on this Ravager. And then look to trade it off with my Tarmogoyf, and then move the counters. Like, just don't act. Get your card out of it, and then call it good. Okay. Alright, um... So I get him for two, three, four, three, four, five, six. I guess we have one more draw step. So I want to go, I want to cast my Snapcaster Mage to start. Because this will grow time of life. Time of life blocks here. Our Tarmogoyf attacks, my opponent, um, then I block here, two, yeah, so if they hit an artifact, we could die. Like, we're definitely walking the tightrope here.
and we're just doing this. We're basically purely doing this to grow our goy for more point. Like, there's not really much else that this is doing. Oh, no, no, no! God damn it. I guess that's... I mean, it doesn't really matter. And now that kills us. Dude, just do it. Do you not like winning? They didn't even need to draw an artifact because this got another point. <laughs> yeah, I am. When, uh, it's, it's a bad habit of mine that I do when I stream. When I'm like in a tense game and I'm nervous, I tend to I tend to like flick my cards a little bit. It is a bad habit. Okay, so in this matchup, I like to cut some street rates. Um, I like to cut some thought seizes. Really, all last looks very good. What I do want, I want a hostage taker. Um, I want rejection. I don't want stubs. I want Golgari charm, Maelstrom pulse. Collective brutality is probably okay. Fallen Interbage is pretty weak in my opinion. Probably want the other Snapcaster to just rebuy all my removal. Excuse me. Exact, but I shouldn't be doing it. It like affects stream quality. I probably just want the Knight of Souls betrayal, and then we're good. Like, I guess that's probably it. The collective brutalities are probably like fine, but they're not really great. I guess I could board out like maybe I just ditch all of my discard. When all my thought seasons when I'm on the, the play, and then bring them back in when I'm on the draw. Just have the four. Well, I guess, come on, my opponent's like tanking. I really like Hostage Taker. Like, this is one of, I basically, so when I play the five color death shadow deck, I have like three, four drops that I think about. And it ranges between like, depending on what I'm feeling like or how I want to sideboard to build my deck, it ranges between Hostage Taker, um, Hazret, and Ranger Vios. Because I I think that I wanted other cards. Like, I don't really like Tendrils very much right now because there's not a lot of Dreads. There's not a lot of company decks. Tendrils doesn't do anything against the human decks. And um, it's just, like, slow, in my opinion. I'll keep this hand. We get to go bobble. We bobble our opponent because we're, we're automatically fetching a one anyways. And I'm going to fetch a basic. We're going to preserve our life total. If we get to Death Shadow, we get to Death Shadow. And I just thought there were other cards. Like, Maelstrom Pulse is kind of in my Flying Tendrils spot. And I like Maelstrom Pulse because it, like, actually kills humans, kills Planeswalkers, kills O-Stone and Karn. So. That's why that's there. So we're 100% fetching. We're going to get a basic. Well, Knight of Souls Betrayal is very good against Dredge. Like, it makes it so Stinkweed does no damage. Um, Amalgams are 2 twos, which doesn't really matter. But, um, Dark Steel Citadel, okay. Amalgams are 2 twos. Uh, what is this? 
What is this nonsense? So I think I'm going to take Ravager because I don't have any removal spells. And I'm going to lean on Hostage Taker to get this Cranial Plating off. And I'm just going to hope my opponent... My opponent's drawing a land, which means like this Cranial Plating is going to be online. But that's slow. I'll take the Ravager. Um... You can sideboard the Godless Shrine if you want. If that's your goal against... You probably cut Knight... Oh, there's Knight of Souls Betrayal. If you cut Knight of Souls Betrayal, it's especially good, in my opinion. So this Knight of Souls Betrayal is just going to be, like, straight Wrath of God. I need a land. That's also really good. So here's the question. Do I... Just not because I can interact with this cranial plating. Do I just interact with the plating or do I save this for a an edge champion? I think I'm gonna play Tarmogoyf. And we're gonna like we're gonna use the ceremonious rejection to kind of seal up the game post Knight of Souls betrayal. Dark Seal Citadel, Signal Pest, Signal Pest. So my opponent's going to attack for 3, 5, 6, 7 next turn. So I'm definitely going to need this. This Knight of uh this Knight of Souls Betrayal will will be nice. If it, if we if we top deck a land next turn, we're in really good shape. There's 15 more in the deck. I'm not going to fetch unless they give me like a must counter. Like I'll, I'll counter an edge champion. I don't know if I need to counter this cranial plating or not. Because of the hostage taker. I'll probably counter like an edge champion. Yeah, you got it. We actually would be racing this if we, if this didn't have lifelink. Arcbound Ravager is a must counter. Yeah. So we go to six minus one, play equipped, and then we take the rep, take the plating. I need to hit a green fetch land in order to get this here. Green fetch land for our basic. Now, does that kill me? It doesn't necessarily kill me. It depends on what my opponent does. Because I might be able to get into a position where I... Decay, like, because they're going to have to commit their cranial plating before they attack. And um, if they decay, if they put the cranial plating on the Vault Scourge, then I actually just kill them. Because I decay this and then crack for 10. So we're hoping that they commit the plating to the. Vault Scourge. And we'll let them attack. Because I can take four and be fine. Bit stressful. A little stressful. And this, this matchup is certainly going to get... like For Six Sigma, this matchup is one of probably the biggest issues you have when you lose red.
So this is, they go to combat. So we let them attack. And then we see what they do. I was on Twitch this morning, Dark Horse. So here's the line. I think they're going to attack with everything. I'm going to decay a Vault Scourge. And then I need to rip a removal spell in order to finish the game out to get this Nexus off the battlefield. Alternatively, if they tap out for something, then... Uh, Night of Souls Betrayal will do it also. So we have to decay here because I can't go to one. I've got to make it so a fetch land is live. Well, now, now we're now we're in a different game because this is two. Then we're still at ten. Then depending on what my opponent does. Yeah, I was on this morning and I streamed a chart the course um, Grixis Death Shadow deck, which was fine. I went 4 1 with it. The chart of courses. While I did not shine because I didn't get to play them with like lingering souls in my deck. Yeah. You know, so we're just gonna let this happen. So untap land. We hit this, and then we hit a fetch land or any land source, and then we get him. We didn't get it. Okay, so how I just swing with both. Our opponent chumps one of them, and then I just move. I kill the thing that the plating gets on. Because they're not going to be able to move the plating at instant speed, which is good for the home team. And now, next turn, they're going to need two blockers in order to kill me. And what they don't know is one blocker. I don't know what their last card is. It easily could be like uh, Gal Blast. And we're not going to play around Gal Blast. My opponent should put this cranial plating on this signal vest, I think, and attack. Because <clears throat> that means that if I kill this, well, I guess I do it before they attack so this doesn't get the trigger. So even this is, this is going to lose, right? Because if I let them put the trigger, I kill this, they go to six, and then... The Ink Moth survive, or makes it, and then I go down to three. So we're kind of just going to... I, what I think is going to happen is I need to play in such a way where I can afford to go Fetch Shock, land Night of Souls Betrayal. Yep. That's a good play from the opponent. So we're in combat. We now push this, because now Night of Souls Betrayal will be able to cast it. Because they can't move the plating at instant speed.
And now my opponent is in a position where they're going to have to jump block both Tarmac Waves. So Fulkerson, I played Grixis Shadow, but I splashed Lingering Souls in the sideboard. Oh, you were here this morning, weren't you? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe Esper Shadows. The problem is, is like, and it's I guess I'm sort of breaking my rule a little bit here with this deck, is like I really want access to Team of Battle Rage somewhere in my 75. Because it just gets you out of so much flag. All right. Opponents thinking about it. Okay, so. So now I go attack, attack. Animate chump here. One, two, three, four. They keep this around, lose this. They have to top deck an artifact. So attack first. I would assume that they go here and here. <coughs> yeah. Because now we are dead on the board, right? Because one, two, three, four, equip. See what they had. Yeah, we just we just had to hit. We needed a removal spell there, but we did go runner runner with path and with push and abrupt decay to keep us in the game. But we just couldn't land our. First week for slash removal slash DBR. Maybe. Right, I'm just dead. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. We won't waste my opponent's time. Oh, there it was. All right, so let's load this up. While we're waiting here. Thank you guys for showing up and hanging out today. I appreciate the support. If you guys would like to support me, you can check out Gamer Craze, which is in upstate New York. It's a great magic shop. They're working on their website. It'll soon be linked to my Twitch bio, but they buy at TCG Low and they sell competitively in order to harbor like a really awesome um, college magic scene. So make it affordable for college kids. If you guys need Magic Online symbols, check out Bar our card holder, the best bot chain in the business. They've got a great setup of, uh, of the best bot chain in the business. They've got like a great for the community between the team and the podcast. So you definitely should check them out. Um, if you ever miss part of the stream and want to watch it, you can check them out on my YouTube page. It's linked below. And if you ever want to get at me on social media, contact me on Twitter. That's where I got this deck list from. And if you guys ever feel like going above and beyond, you can subscribe to the channel. If you have Twitch Prime, then you get a free subscription every month. And, you know, I appreciate anything I can get. And I appreciate all of you guys. So, everybody that's watching. So, let's put it back on the stream. And let's jump back here. Unibar Geist. Play against this guy earlier. This guy's playing 8 Rack. In which we are going to like eight racks already a good a bad matchup for death shadow decks in my opinion. So we're gonna struggle a little more because we don't have lingering souls. Excuse me. <coughs> so again, my opponent decided to play. Again, we want to just keep, we don't want to mulligan anything that we can get away with it because mulliganing against an 8-rat deck is just like asking to lose the game. And anything that you guys have to, you know, help the stream out would be great. You know, like I'm still running this survey here. I've got most of my data that I need from it, but give me... 
I've got most of my data, but if you want to contribute, you can. There, just any tips, anything like that, and that would be great. All right, let's let's thought scour. I'm probably ditching this land, I think. That's a good hit. So what do I want to do? I want to get rid of this, and I think that I want to get rid of this. I want to play to this Liliana. Okay, so that's the card we're going to discard at least. So I'm, I'm going to assume that I'm about to get hit with a wrench mine here, which is going to be pretty savage. But this Liliana is going to do some overtime work if we don't get hit with a smallpox, I mean. So, and I'll also, I'm also really open to playing people's decks. This deck, I, oh god, that's gross. Well, at least we're going to be able to get our, uh, get a creature back on my end. That's pretty good. So, I think, unfortunately, I'm going to get Overgrown Tomb, deal a little bit of damage to myself. And then go up. And then, like, in a perfect world, I hit, like, a fetch land so I can go tick down Tarmogoyf and Death Shadow in order to handle this this guy here, this, this Veil. I also do donation deck lists. I've got one in the queue that I don't have the record for or the amount for for renting, so i got to wait till I build up that a little bit. Oh, that's kind of gross. I guess it doesn't really matter. Unless my opponent lands like a rack, then it matters. Then is he going to cold cock my girl? You going to whack my lady? All right. So now basically I can trade my Liliana for our opponent's Liliana. <clears throat> Unless I draw a creature. So I think I'm just going to see, hopefully I can cash in Liliana's here. Like I've got to look to trade. And then we're going to fight down, fight through two Mutal Vaults. Plus there's a Raven's Kind in my graveyard, so every single card that we draw is like we're going to have to play it or get rid of it. Yeah, my friend set up a Pillapala deck for Modern, which I guess is like a collected company card that like untaps and taps things. Surprise my opponent is just gonna go like eat, smack. That's what I would have done. I would have gone down with my veil, then I'd have just cracked me for four. Unless they've got like a like a rack or something like that. Um, so I guess that gets me Tarmogoyf. I think Tarmogoyf at this point is better than like Snapcaster. Snapcaster could get good. If I draw a, if I just draw a Snapcaster Mage, then it's gonna be very good. Oh wow, is my Goyf gonna live? Does my opponent just have lands? So am I okay trading five damage, four damage? So 13, 7, 8, 4. I think I need to attack with my Tarmogoyf while I can, because this e this Tarmogoyf easily could get hit with like a smallpox or something, and I just need to get my damage in and hope that the top of my deck is good to me. Yeah, we do have a lot of threat density, which is why I like this deck. I like this deck because of how threat dense it is, as opposed to the Grixis Shadow deck. Yeah. So then they crack me for four, and then I guess I should have held my land, but they would have discarded it anyways. We'll leave this near because we can fetch a basic.
So that just kills me because they go attack, block one, take two. The rat kills me. Yeah, this this is this is tough to say the least. Okay, so I want my hostage shaker. I think I want I think I want surgery. I don't know about pulses. I want to get rid of my removal. I think I want my Snapcaster. Just as like, I'm totally okay with the Snapcaster Rage if I just flash it in there and it does something. I think I can probably make room for these Fulminate Rages. I don't like Stubborn Denial against these kind of decks because it's just so difficult to have like dude plus dude. And this destroys Shrieking Affliction and can regenerate, can basically counter a whatever it is. Um, out of my opponent. Can't think. It can counter a fatal push. Um, is anything else in here better than just like collective brutality? Could shave on like a street wraith for brutality. Four man, maybe four mana against the whatever discard smallpox deck is a little is a little rough. Yeah, we'll try this. At least Collective Brutality and Pinch can give me some life. I'll be right back. So what does everybody have planned for their Saturday or Sunday? Today's Sunday, but we have tomorrow off. So what does everybody have planned for their Sunday night? So do anything sweet? first and I'll keep this hand because I can traverse for a land if I need to and Thoughtseize I should have mulligan I should have been on the draw that was a mistake from me At least my opponent Mulligan, which is good for the home team. Really gonna hope that we don't hit like a multiple discard hand from our opponent. Yeah, they have two discard spells. So this takes this. All right, so we're just going to get rid of my opponent's wrench mine. They're so far off these Lilianas. And then I can take their Thoughtseize. Like, because they might... There's a world where my opponent just takes my Thoughtseize and leans on their, uh, like... Uh, what was I going to say? There's a world where my opponent takes the Thoughtseize and then tries to close the game out with the wrench mine. But I should have drawn. There's a mistake here that I messed up. Like I, I should have always take the draw. So I took my thought sees, which is good for the home team. So I'm gonna get. So what do they do with their top card? They put a card on top. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to slam this Tarmogoyf and just hope. And if we get smallpox, we get smallpox. And we just hope that our opponent doesn't go runner-runner into, like, Liliana. Because I assume they have at least one land on top of their deck. Okay, now they don't. All right. Well, so you're saying there's a chance. So we're going to keep this Golgari charm in our hand. Because it counters a fatal push. <laughs> we're going to keep the land in our hand too. 
So that likely takes Traverse. If it takes Golgari Charm, at least we can Traverse for Tarmogoyf. Need the ball. So they're one land away from Eliana, which is not good. That was a great draw. The problem is they're going to be able to double Liliana me. Which is really bad. Because like I can deal with one. Unless I start ripping like Snapcaster Mages. I just need to hope that our opponent misses on land drops for like one or two more turns. Yeah, now we're in trouble. So, probably ditch. It doesn't really matter. I guess I should ditch Death Shadow, because if I draw Lily on the last hope, it's going to be easier to play. That's actually like a really good draw. So if I attack this, I think I just attack my opponent, ditch my Golgari Charm, flash in my... Flash in my... Uh, my Snapcaster... Or, I can snap Thoughtseize now. I think I just attack my opponent. Attack my opponent. Snap Thoughtseize. They tick up. We get rid of their Liliana. And we try to fade a draw step. Because this is 3, 6. When they tick up, it's so 11... Then we split the differences. We send two at Liliana. 11, seven. Yeah, I think, we're, I think we're going at our opponent. We're gonna make our opponent spend the mana. No, what does that do? I don't think there's any sense in attacking this Liliana at this point. So let's go with them. And then I'm gonna snap Thoughtseize. In which I should have done before combat, because the Liliana, the Tarmac Wave would have grown. I just went to combat before I thought about this. So this is a mistake on my end. I just missed out on a point of damage. So they have a push. So if I take push, then I eat it, let them play all their mana. Edict, take Snapcaster, then I have to attack Liliana in two turns. So yeah, we just take push. And that was just a mistake on like I just I just sequenced poorly. There, that was that was my fault. I went too fast. And I'd already gotten to combat before I thought about my lines. I couldn't like back up and do that because I missed a point. And if we miss a point, missing a point is not good. So he ditched a swamp. So they got Liliana. So attack Liliana with this. I need to attack Liliana with both creatures. But then they eat. Oh man. Oh no. Well, then they lose their land. So they have to top deck a land to cast it. So I could just attack Liliana, attack my opponent. They go animate block. These trade. Then they have to top deck a land in order to cast their Liliana. But then if I attack here, this trades, then it's just Edict. So I need to send both of these at Liliana. So right, plus I need to get Liliana off the board.
or I can attack here and send this at our opponent. <clears throat> and then they're literally on in hand, I eat with a Snapcaster. Attack, attack. But if my opponent top decks a land, I basically can't win. And basically in every single scenario that I have, if my opponent top decks a land, I can't win. Because if I go block here, attack. This gets through. Opponent top decks a land, plays another one, edicts me. Liliana versus draw step. So if I go here and here, and my opponent misses. I basically can't win if my opponent draws a land. So I think my best line of play is to attack my opponent, attack this Liliana with Tarmwolf, attack here with Snapcaster Mage. Then my opponent probably doesn't block. They play Liliana, tick down. I just had the lands worked out. It might be right to play a second Watery Grave. That's just how it worked out. I'm going to attack Liliana with this. And then attack my opponent with Snapcaster Mage. Then I will leave this card in my hand. Okay, so now my opponent is hoping they draw land. If they draw land, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Yeah, that sucks. So what are my other good draws? Snapcaster Mage is a good draw, because Snapcaster Mage gets me Death Shadow. Alright, well let's... Ooh, so now... So how do I do this? Traverse or Snapcaster Mage, hold Snapcaster Mage in my hand. Next turn, tick up on this. Oh, this sucks, because I can't... There's no way to make it so I can, unless I top deck a land. So if I go Traverse for Snapcaster, hold Snapcaster, tick up, my opponent. But then if my opponent hits a discard spell, flash in my Snapcaster range. And three Misties, that, that, that's fair. So if I go get Snapcaster, hold Snapcaster. Get Snapcaster, hold Snapcaster in my hand. Draw a land. Snapcaster, Traverse. But I don't have that many lands. Is it just better to get Tarmogoyf? I don't know. I'll hold that for like a what's the play. You just go get Tarmogoyf. And then play my Misty. If I'm going to get Tarmogoyf, I might as well get Death Shadow because they're the same size. But then he just eats, but then he just eats my, like he just chump locks and then trades with my Tarmogoyf. So if I go get Tarmogoyf, we're both top decking. My opponent, my opponent gets the first crack at it.
I guess I want to get Time of Life because it's more mana efficient. Play Time of Life, they tick up. I attack, they chum. Unless I draw another Traverse and I can get Fulminator Mage and kill this. All right, opponent, you got to miss. My opponent has to miss, and I have to hit. <clears throat> That's kind of a hit. We missed. So now we attack. Opponent animates chumps. And they actually have the option to go up. So I'm going to leave this card in my hand. They might get greedy and go up to try to, like, do this plan again. Because if I, I just, they probably assume that I don't have very many removal spells in my deck. They might just look to trade. But then they don't know what I... They, they probably can, like, understand that I missed. Okay. Four turn clock. That's if my opponent misses on like a rack here. Oh, wow. Two, four, four, then two. Yeah, I'm just dead because I can't double. I can't, like I take four this turn. Yeah. All that was frustrating. Blah. Trying to think if there was another. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could have done there. If I got Snapcaster Mage, I held Snapcaster Mage and land in my hand. I disc. They discard land. I don't know. Maybe I get Fulminator, but Fulminator Mage doesn't do anything. Maybe I should have kept in some removal. But they drew all four mutables, which turned out to be insane. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Excuse me. Opponents, GLHF and me. Okay. So I'm going to keep this hand. It's a bit risky. But we can discard spell on one, traverse for a second land if we need to, on two. AT viewers, I appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out today. You know, I hope, you, I hope you're all having a good day. This will probably be my last match of the day. I might do a stream tomorrow morning because I got the day off. I've got to work tomorrow. At least at night tomorrow. Oh, Urza. It's the good Tron deck, too. All right, so we go get Overgrown Tomb. And I'm going to Inquisition because I really don't want them to go Tron Piece Ancient Stirrings this turn. And I could sit around and stub that, but okay. So I think we definitely take Ancient Stirrings. The relic's annoying, but at least Ancient Stirrings is like an out for them to draw more cards. Miss. It appears my opponent is going to miss. We get rid of our sorcery. And then we can traverse for our land. Yeah. You greedy bastard. All right, that's good too. So. What sucks is that we don't have any pressure. And that's going to make this game difficult. We have trips, Karn, Jesus Christ. Maybe I should have a breeding pool just so I could like flash snap in as a moron. But like, 
it was we saw it was really important for me to thought seize on one there or discard spell on one and they have to cycle this now if they don't hit you have to cycle come on cycle cycle all right miss god what a greedy tron player Traverse. All right, well, I'm going to get a sorcery into my graveyard. We're going to have to start rebuilding. <coughs> I'll play out the forest, play out my land or whatever, then we'll pass. Damn you, Tron. If my opponent hits Tron, then, like, it is super over. That's going to help them hit Tron. That, this means they drew Fatal Push. That means they have a Fatal Push. Alright, so... I'm just going to flash this Snapcaster Mage at the end of my opponent's turn if, if we don't get to stub something. Get out of here. I hope they have a land. <laughs> so again, we know there are four cards. All right, so we can now bobble. So we can't dictate anything that we our opponent does with this draw, so we should actually bobble ourselves, and if it's not good, I'm going to shuffle with Traverse. Street Wraith is a good draw, because that's going to give us Delirium, which is going to turn us on here. So the opponent's got three or four payoffs. Definitely gonna cycle this Street Wraith no matter if my opponent does anything, anything fancy here. And again, we can't beat a Tron piece. Yeah, it's not like they could do anything anyways, you know? All right, I'm going to... I'm going to cycle this now. Because I need, I need either another land. I guess I'm going to go like this now. I'm not going to flash Snapcast Major. Because we hit another land, I can go Traverse. That's a good draw, too. So let's... I need a land. I might Traverse for a land to have Snap Stub up. Ooh, that's really good. Okay, so Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Thoughtseize no matter what. So let's start there. Go scorer. Okay, so I'm just gonna, we're just gonna hope that we get by. We're just like, our opponent doesn't hit it. I'm gonna traverse for Death Shadow. Play Death Shadow. And then next turn, I can go Thoughtseize, Snap Thoughtseize. And if my opponent misses, there's a high... If I go snap, see, Thoughtseize, Snap Thoughtseize, and I draw a land, then my opponent's dead. Just don't hit it. You've got to be kidding me. That means I can cast it too. Jesus Christ.
So I can still, it's not the end of the world. Like, I can still thought seize my opponent. Snapcaster Mage thought seize them, get this card off the table, and then we're both top deck. My opponent would have died had they not hit that. Because I would have just gone Snapcaster Mage, Dismember my Snapcast or on Thoughts. I would have gone Snap Thoughtsies, Discard, Dismember my Snapcaster Mage, and would have just killed them. And then we and then we have a two turn clock. And that's three out of the four cards. So I probably have like two more. God damn it. You gotta be kidding me. That's just gotta be a. I'm a little salty. I am a little salty. Yeah. I think we played this game really, really well. Like, we gave ourselves a chance to win the game that we shouldn't have. And what sucks from here is the entire Tron deck is like very redundant from this from this position. I guess, yeah. Oh, walking blister for five. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Alright, full of air mage is coming in, Golgari Arms coming in, Maelstrom Pulse, Hostage Taker, Surgical. No, we don't want the collective brutalities. And then I want all of these as well. We don't want Dismember. We don't want Liliana the Last Hope. We don't want our removal. We have to cut five more cards. There's a chance that I don't want, that I'm not going to have time for Snapcaster Mage. Because they're especially going to be bringing in some Graveyard Hate. Golgari Charm is like, it regenerates off of O-Stone. That's pretty much the only reason that it's in there, so it might not make it. But like, it's in like, it's currently in the maybe category. And it's not going to make it. So I have four stubs and a rejection. Three Snapcaster Mages. Going to Ditch Traverse because they're going to have Graveyard Hate. Thought Scour regrows my graveyard, but it's pretty poor. Yeah, I mean, good is like, you know, suspect. I think I want to just ditch my, I think I want to ditch like, just shave here, and then cut like, cut a land. I guess Pulse, I guess you're right in that Pulse isn't very good, because the Karn has already come down. After they make Tron, yeah, that's fair. So the question is, this is like my one card that like it's gonna be able to handle something if I, they Tron me. Like, I don't think we want the third snap. I'm gonna go like this. Again, it's not it's not great, but it is it is what we have going on.
I'm going to keep this hand. I'm going to fetch a Watery Grave on one, Cycle my Street Wraith, and then I'm either going to Cantrip or Stub or Thoughtseize, whatever my opponent does. And we're going to be pretty aggressive with this Stubborn Denial because we're going to be using our mana until turn three. God, we're good at this game. <laughs> Excuse me. Put a card on the bottom. So I guess a pretty easy marsh. Or pretty easy ancient servants. And then we play our get ourselves a Garmatoy from play next turn. <clears throat> and then we're gonna attack with it at least as a four or five, because I'm going to Dot Scour. There's a power plant, chromatic sphere. All right, so we're gonna put the shields down. I agree, their hand's not very good. I'm gonna get breeding pool because we have a couple blue sources. Jesus Christ, it's 28 to 7. The Jaguars are just absolutely pistol whipping. The Wow, I drew a push. God damn it, man. Give me Death Shadow. Tarmogoyf is the next best thing. My moto is tweaking out quite a bit. God, unfortunately, I think I have to stub this because without that, I don't have a clock. It gives me delirium. Street Wraith. So we didn't hit anything of really note. So let's fetch here. I'm going to just Inquisition my opponent. I don't really know what they could have that they wouldn't play besides an O-Stone. I guess O-Stone would be the one card that they like the, that they could have that this could hit that they wouldn't have already played. Okay, so they're just living on the edge. At least we get him for five, ten, and then even if they find if as long as we get him for ten, even if they find a removal spell, they're dead. Jags over pats, easy. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, the only thing that they would have right. I mean, the only thing that they could have hit was. Sylvan Scrying and O-Stone. That's pretty much it. They would have played anything else. I don't think I want to change anything. I think we're just going to run it back and hope the magical gods smite the Tron player.
Peter. <sighs> yeah, we'll keep it. We'll put that on top. I mean, it's pretty much one of the better fives we could ask for. Like discard spell, discard spell, counter spell, Tarmogoyf. Like the odds are that our Tarmogoyf is going to get large enough to turn this on. The thing is, we just need to hope that we don't get turn three carned. So let's go get Watery Grave. It's a pretty good five. Like, if I could have handpicked a five, they, these would have been Thought Seasons, but that probably would have been it. And this would have been a Death Shadow. Okay. So I think this is a pretty, pretty easy Ancient Stirrings. We're just gonna like try to cut their draw steps off. No matter what. Oh, they ripped a fucking stirrings. Take that. Okay, so we know their hand. So I can take both those stones. Which I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm actually just gonna take both the O stones. Because then that means they've only got one really one way to answer the Tarmogoyf. And they need to find now mana and answers. Because, like, I'm going to assume that my stub trades with this Ugin. And then we just got to hope. It definitely sucks. My time of life is only a 3-4. So it doesn't necessarily, like, kill everything. Or it doesn't, like, the stub's not turned on. You just miss. Come on. God. They just never miss. They never miss. All right. Street Wraith. Now you need a fetch land. Bobble's not going to do it. Because they're going to cast Ugin no matter what. And they're drawing Wyrm Coil. Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. I'm a bit salty on that one. That's frustrating. Just playing against Tron is frustrating, but let's go back to the deck. Let's check it out, and we'll get ready to set up shop here. So, I like the deck. I think that it needs some sideboard help. A big thing that I just like have to add, like when I when I think about this Sultai Shadow deck here, is like why. Yeah, it didn't work out all that well. But it's like, when it comes to this, I did like the Snapcasters. I didn't like Liliana the Last Hope. Like, I mean, Liliana the Last Hope has its spots, but it's, it's just not Veil. Vale. Um, the counter spells were good. The cantrips were nice. Um, I think overall it's got potential. You're just gonna have to work with it. I think you're. Uh, I think you're going to be behind the eight ball, not casting lingering souls, and just pretty much every fair matchup. Like Snapcaster is great, but it doesn't get on the battlefield and overwhelm your opponent. Like, um, it doesn't just overwhelm your opponent, similar to like lingering souls would. But it was fun. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call it a day. Um. I would play. I think Thought Scour is better than. Um, I think Thought Scour is better than Opt and Grim Flare. Maybe Grim Flare could see play in this deck, for sure. I would have to find room to find Veils and Grim Flares. I think, but but I think that's the plan. So I appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out tonight. Um, please remember to hit the follow button on your way out, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their long weekend. We'll see you guys later.